In this course, you're going to be exploring data cleaning with pandas. Data cleaning is one of the first things you need to do with any data set. With a library such as pandas, where you have hundreds of functions, methods, and options which you can pass to those functions and methods, it can be a bit overwhelming to get started. Sometimes it can be helpful to see someone actually cleaning some data. So in this course, you'll be looking at cleaning three different data sets. You'll take them on one by one. Each data set you go through will need more cleaning than the last one. You can take on this course without much Pandas experience. You'll be taken through how to get set up for data cleaning, all the way from setting up your virtual environment to setting up Visual Studio Code with the Jupyter extension. This will provide you with a really productive work environment where you can build piece by piece a reusable data cleaning script, but also not losing out on the interactivity of something like a Jupyter notebook. The first data set you'll be looking at is a CSV file of Olympic data. It catalogs the number of medals different countries have won in different Olympic games. This data doesn't need much cleaning, but it will be a great example to see how you can set up your reusable data cleaning script and start to explore pandas and your data. The second data set is a list of different towns that have universities in them. However, it's not a CSV file, it's just a plain text file, and the format that it's in doesn't lend itself very well to tabular data. That is, two-dimensional data like what you'd find in a table. Tabular data is what Pandas is good at. Taking on these three different data sets one at a time will give you a chance to put into practice what you've learned from the previous data set and be exposed to new and increasingly complex techniques. The last and dirtiest data set that you'll have to deal with is the books data set. This includes information such as the date of publication and the place of publication, which have very useful information but in a very inconsistent format. Following along and building out the data cleaning script step by step will provide you with some great techniques for how to structure complex and multiple data cleaning operations, all the while slowly building your knowledge of the Pandas API. In the next lesson, you'll be setting up your work environment. So clear up some space on your desktop and open up your command line application to get into it. To get started on your Pandas data cleaning adventure, you're going to have to first set up your work environment. That means creating a folder to work from, setting up a virtual environment within that folder, installing Pandas and Jupyter into that virtual environment. While this course is about Pandas, Jupyter is a great tool to be able to interact with Pandas and your data and explore it interactively. You'll be setting up VS Code to work with all this, and then finally you'll be downloading the data sets. In this video, these steps are going to be gone through quite quickly in a step-by-step -step fashion, but there will be links below if you want to delve deeper into any of these topics. This is a PowerShell prompt on a Windows 10 machine. The first thing you want to do is to navigate a folder like you see here, RP for real Python, but this can be any folder that you want. Maybe it's your users folder, just a folder where you're going to create another folder which will contain all the materials for this course. Once you're in this folder, you can make a directory. And then you can go into the directory. Once you're there, you're ready to create your virtual environment. But first, you'll want to check your Python version. Note that some of the examples in this course will only work with Python 3.9 and above. It doesn't have to be 3.10.3. .3, it just needs to be 3.9 and above. With your virtual environment created, you can activate it. On Windows, this is done by running the activate.ps1 script in scripts bemf. On a Linux machine or a Mac, this will be source bemf bin activate. In any case, make sure that the virtual environment is activated. With your virtual environment created and activated, now you can lay down some of the basic structure for what's going to be covered in the course.
Okay, so that's created a folder called datasets where you're going to be downloading the datasets. And it's also created three files, books PY, Olympics PY, towns PY, where you write the code for each data cleaning script for each of the three data sets. Before starting up VS Code, you want to install some things in your virtual environment. That's a lot of packages. The install process might look slightly different and might take a while on your machine. But with that all successfully installed, now you can move on and start up VS Code. On the left, you'll see the empty folder and the empty files that you created. You'll see the virtual environment. Ignore this VS Code folder. These are just some settings to make it easier to record this video. The first extension that you'll want to install is this official Microsoft Python extension. When you install this extension, it will come included with another extension, PyLance. The other extension that you'll want to install is the Jupyter extension, again, by Microsoft. This will allow you to render Jupyter Notebooks in VS Code. Note the version, and note that in this video, the pre-release version is being used because of some issues encountered on Mac M1 processors. Switching to the pre-release version fixed some issues that were had with that. This extension comes bundled with the Jupyter key map and Jupyter Notebook renderers. You should only need to install the main Jupyter extension and everything else will come included. To get the data sets, navigate to the real Python, Python data cleaning GitHub repository. Once there, you'll see that there is a folder called datasets. And in there, you can click on each of them with the middle mouse button, which will open three new tabs. And once in one of the tabs, you can press the download button here to download them individually. You can also clone the whole repository and move the data sets over to your local project. Once you have downloaded the data sets, place them into the data sets folder. Here on the left hand side, you'll see the names of the files. Make sure your files have the same names as you can see on the left here. If you haven't used Jupyter Notebooks in VS Code before, here's a quick walkthrough of how that works. The reason you might want to use VS Code over Jupyter Notebooks is because you can write your cleanup script and interact with your data in a very similar way to Jupyter Notebooks all in one place. So you don't have to have two windows open. You can just split the screen within Visual Studio. Then you can also run portions of your cleanup script interactively and then interact with it like a notebook. Open up any of the PY files, write a comment, and in the comment, put two percentage signs. If you've installed the extension correctly, VS Code should be able to detect this, and it will give you some options to run cell, run below, debug cell. Now within this cell, you can write a Python statement. You can create more cells with the comment and percentage signs. And write different code there. Try clicking on the run cell button of one of these cells. That should open up a window to the side, which is your interactive Jupyter kernel. It will try to connect to the Jupyter kernel, and then it will execute that cell. Likewise, you can run the cell below that, and it will run everything in this cell. The shortcut for this is also Shift Enter or Control Enter. They both work. So this allows you to write fleeting code in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, which you can also run with Control Enter or the play sign which will allow you to interact with the code that's already been written. If you're having trouble getting your interactive window to connect to your virtual environment, you can try clicking the button in the top right that says Venv Python 3.10, or it might say something else depending on what your Python version is. This will bring up the option to change the kernel for the interactive window. Make sure that your virtual environment is selected here and that you have installed Pandas and Jupyter in the virtual environment.
There have been issues on Mac M1 processors with selecting the right kernel, but updating the Jupyter extension and moving it to the pre-release version has fixed this in our tests. Another solution for Mac is installing Conda. In our tests, using Conda seemed to work around this issue. That was setting up your work environment. You created your folder, virtual environment, you installed Pandas and Jupyter, you set up VS Code with its extensions, and you downloaded the datasets. You're now ready to get some cleaning. In the next lesson, you'll be exploring the first dataset, the Olympic data. This lesson is an introduction to the first dataset that you'll be cleaning, the Olympic data. The first step you should take now that your project is set up is to do some initial exploration of the Olympic data. You'll find that the data is about the performance of countries in the Olympic Games. The main thing about this data is that the headers need renaming because they aren't very descriptive. So without further ado, open up VS Code to your project and get started with some initial data exploration. Before writing any code or doing anything with pandas, the first step is to just visually inspect the data, see what we're dealing with. So open up the datasets folder and go to the Olympics CSV. Okay, so what are you looking at here? Now, sometimes with CSV data, it can be good to turn off word wrap. You can do that with Alt Z, or you can Control Shift P, find word wrap, and toggle word wrap. Okay, at the top here, you can see that there is some numbers indicating how many columns there are. The next line looks like the headers, and as you can see, they're not very descriptive, and they have some strange question marks, exclamation marks, doesn't really make much sense. The rest of the data, however, looks okay. There's countries, there's numbers, which probably indicate how many medals have been won in different Olympic Games. So that all looks good. Let's go to the bottom, pressing Control N. All this data looks reasonably well structured. The main things that you're going to need to do with this one, I'm going to press Control Home to go to the top again. Take these headers here and rename them into something a bit more descriptive. That was exploring the Olympic data. Now you've seen it's about the performance of countries in the Olympics, most likely about the medals that each country has won. And you've seen that the headers need a bit of cleanup. In the next lesson, you'll be setting up some boilerplate for this specific cleaning script. You've set up your project, you've set up VS Code, and you've had an initial look at the data. The last setup step is to write some very basic boilerplate code. This code will eventually become your cleanup script. Once you have your boilerplate code loaded, you'll be able to load the data into a data frame. You'll also be revising what a data frame is, and you'll do some initial data exploration now that your data is in a data frame, and you'll look at some of the methods you can use within Pandas to do that initial exploration. You'll want to open the Olympics PY file, and to make sure you've set up everything correctly, write a comment with two percent signs, and you should see run cell. Write some very simple code to test this out. You can press Control Enter to run this, or you can click on run cell at the top left. This should open another window, which will connect to the virtual environment. and it should print, and the output should be visible below the cell that has just been executed. Now you're ready to start writing your cleanup script. The first thing you want to do is to import pandas. You can import pandas as it is, but usually, since you'll be using it a lot, you can just abbreviate that as PD. To learn more about imports, check out some of the links below. Now, you'll want all this data cleaning, the reading of the file, and the data cleaning all to be within one function. This is going to be your cleanup function. So start by defining a function. Right now, you're just going to write pass to do nothing as a placeholder for the function. Then below, you'll read that function, and you'll assign the result of that to a variable. So read will execute and then pass the cleaned up data back to Olympics. This is the general workflow you'll want to follow. You'll work 
on filling out the read function, which will clean up your data, you'll run this cell and you'll see the output here. You can also explore that resulting data by running things here. without having to write that in your main script. You want to keep this main script on the left for your pure cleaning code, and then all your exploration you can do on the right here as you would in a Jupyter Notebook. One of the best resources that you can use are the docs. This pandas.pydata.org forward slash docs forward slash is a great source for everything pandas. The pandas API is huge. There's so many methods and properties and ways of doing things that will make your head spin. This is why the documentation is important to have close at hand at all times. It's impossible for any one person to memorize all the API. You'll always be having to consult this back and forth as you're developing your Pandas script. As you get more experienced, you'll be able to remember your most common methods, but you'll never escape the documentation really. So one of the first things you can do here is to search for a way to read CSV files. The search bar is great for that. So just type CSV in here and press enter. And it'll be searching. Down below here, you'll see some of the results. And here looks like the one that you're looking for, pandas.readcsv. So click that. Here is the method name at the top. Here is the definition with all the possible different options you can pass in. As you can see, there are loads. Again, don't try and remember all of these. It's impossible. What you're looking for is just the basic parameters here. So file path. At the bottom, you'll usually find some examples. Here is what basic example. So you can just call the method and pass in a string which represents the path of the file of the CSV that you're looking for. With that information, you know that you can call pandas, or pd as has been imported here, and here it immediately suggests read CSV. The path here is datasets, that's our folder, and then Olympics. Now you run this to make sure that it runs well. And here you can see that it's abbreviated the code and it's just showing you the first line and the tick is showing you that that worked. However, you've not assigned this, you've not returned anything here. Put in a return. Now this will return a data frame and it will assign it to Olympics. Clear the interactive window by pressing the button up here on the top left of that tab, clear all, and then you can run the cell again, which was successful. And now, one of the things you can do is look at what's happened here. Now you can run this with the play button here, or you can press shift enter. And as you can see, there is data. One of the main methods you can use to summarize data and just to check that you have some data and to look at the first part is to look at Olympics and you can call head, the method head, on any data frame or series. And here you can see it just shows you the first five entries. There are also other methods like tail, which will show you the last entries. You've loaded some data, and it's been loaded into a data frame. What is a data frame? It's essentially a way to represent a table. And that's two-dimensional data, that is, rows and columns, or a list of lists, but only two levels deep, so that's two-dimensional. This is pretty much the basis of Pandas. Pandas is good at working with this kind of data, data in a table. So if you're using stuff for Excel or any kind of spreadsheet program, Pandas is very, very good at handling this kind of data. As you've seen, it has a very rich API. There's many, many methods that you can use to manipulate your data using data frames, series, and all sorts of other stuff. The data frame is the main object you'll be working with. You'll also be working a lot with series, 
which are sort of one-dimensional data. That is, it's like taking a column of your table or a row of your table. And if you deal with that in isolation, you'll usually be working with a series. More on that later. So that was setting up for cleaning. You've set up your boilerplate code. You've loaded data into a data frame. You've seen what a data frame is, and you've done some initial data exploration with the head method, for instance, or the tail method. So now, with all the setup out the way, you're ready to get stuck in to cleaning some data, which you'll get started in the next lesson by renaming some headers. In this lesson, you'll be renaming some of the headers of the Olympic dataset. As they stand currently, the names aren't very good. One of the first things you'll probably want to do before looking into even slicing the data and having a bit of a look how it's structured is to rename the headers and tidy up the column names and the labels of the columns. Because right now, they're being automatically assigned by pandas. As you can see here, the labels given are just numbers, likewise with the rows. So you want to first make this the header, and then you'll want to rename these because at the moment they are a bit messy. The way you can approach this is by using the rename method. There's a couple ways to use this. You can use a dictionary as a map for renaming. That is, on the one hand, you have your keys, which are the actual column names. And then as the value for the entries of the dictionary, you'll have the names that you want them to have. This will also be a good opportunity to learn about ignoring errors. For example, if your column names change for whatever reason, you may want to suppress any errors or not. The thing you want to do is to have the errors raise up so you know something has changed. And you're also going to take this opportunity to understand what the in-place argument means and why you generally should use it. It's present in a lot of methods in Pandas, and essentially it means you change the data frame in place, meaning that you're not sort of creating a copy of it, which is what a lot of methods do. They will take the original data frame, transform it with something like the rename method, and then return a new data frame. The in place argument means that it's going to change the actual data frame and not return. It will just return nothing or none. Back in VS Code, you've got your code that will read the CSV Olympics and will return a data frame with that data. A handy thing about looking at your code through this interactive window and using Jupyter and IPython in general is you can take your data frame, get a method, and we're looking at the rename, and instead of calling it, you can append a question mark here. And now you can press Shift, Enter, or Control, Enter, or this Play button. It will output the documentation of the rename method. As you can see, First, it's telling you that the output of this exceeds the size limit, and you can output the full data in a text editor. So if you click this, you'll get a messy output because a lot of these are ANSI control codes, which tell the console to color things and highlight them. But in a plain text file, this obviously does not work. But here you can see it says it takes a mapper, which is the dictionary, and it takes a bunch of different arguments. And here it gives you a bit about the function. Dict values must be unique. Labels not contained in a dict series will be left as is. Extra labels listed don't throw an error. Things like this. It's just a very useful shortcut to the documentation if you just want to consult something quickly and not have to go to the website. The read CSV function has an argument you can add in called header. And then you can set that to one, which means the first row. So now if you run this again with shift enter, and now you can see that the first row has been designated as the header. With the header being designated, you'll want to look at renaming these headers into something more readable. For this, you can use the aptly named rename method. And the argument you'll use with rename is the columns keyword argument. Now, to this, you can pass in a dictionary, which represents a one-to-one -one mapping of the existing headers and the ones that you want. So the first one is called unnamed zero. So copy this, have it as your first key. You'll need to wrap it in speech brackets, 
and have a look at what the data is here. Now, this looks like they are countries. So how about calling this column country? Save that, run it. And then down here, you'll see that it's run up to get the last command. Control enter to run this. And as you can see, the first column has now been renamed. So how about you get this one, winter, and change it to just winter Olympics. So grab the whole of this question mark winter we'll just call this winter olympics save control enter to run go down here have a syntax error because there's no comma separating the key value pairs shift enter again to run down here this is run up control enter to run this again and now you can see that winter olympics has been renamed here now comes a bit of a tedious job of just renaming all the headers. That should be it. Control enter to run. So down here seems to be a syntax. Nope, we're fine. Head. And as you can see now, all the columns have been named to something a bit more user-friendly. Although there seems to be one that has been missed, this last one. There are many conventions, but one of the conventions is just to use typical Python snake case here for all the column names, which just makes it a bit more intuitive to get the names and reference things. This script is looking good. It cleans up all the headers, puts the header in the right place, and renames them all into something a bit more usable. Running this, and then looking at the data, would seem to be all good. So this data set could now be considered clean enough to start some data analysis on it. In the next session, you're going to be reviewing lock sometimes called loc or the location indexer, for slicing and dicing and exploring your data.